you, Nancy. What a wonderful way to begin our worship service. Good morning to all of you. And welcome to worship on this second Sunday in the season of Epiphany. And a special word of welcome not only to those of you who are here in our sanctuary, but also those of you who are joining us on our live stream. We are delighted that we are able once again to gather as God's people, the church, um, to be strengthened, to support one another in prayer, and to hear God's word, uh, a word which gives us life and joy and hope. And so welcome this morning. A couple of announcements to call to your attention. Um, First of all, for today, the church council already met at 7.30 this morning um, to get ready for the annual meeting in a couple of weeks. So our prayers of thanksgiving for our council. Um, And after worship today, we will have Sunday school at 10 a.m. And also the worship and music board will be meeting at 10 a.m. following our service as well. Um, Next Sunday, I want to highlight our youth event for the month. We will meet here at 1.45 p.m. next Sunday, and we will have a sledding event at Skinner's Hill in Austin, followed by supper at Steve's Pizza. And so if you are a youth in grades 9 through 12, you are invited to come. Um, Sign-up information is in the bulletin, and we look forward um, to having that outing. So... I know last night I drove by Skinner's Hill on my way to pick up my mom, and it was filled with kids going up and down that hill. So it's a perfect weather to be able to do that. So next Sunday, 1.45 p.m. Also, I want to highlight um, Sunday, the following Sunday, Sunday, January 29th. That is Trinity's annual meeting date. And there are two vi- items for sure that we will be voting on. The first is the proposed 2023 budget. And the second is the call committee's recommendation for calling a pastor. And so we um, please put that on your calendar because we want to make sure that we have a quorum. Um, So annual meeting Sunday, January 29th. And that will be held in the sanctuary um, immediately following our worship service. The rest of the announcements I read for you to read at your leisure. And at this time, I invite you to please stand as you are able. And let us begin our worship with our gathering hymn. Number 665, Rise, Shine, You People. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Holy God, 
our strength and our redeemer. By your spirit, hold us forever, that through your grace, we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you and joyfully find you through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
first lesson is from Isaiah 49. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my people, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Let's read Psalm, portions of Psalm 40 responsibly. I waited patiently upon the Lord who stooped to me and heard my cry. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. In your plans for us, none can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. And so I said, here I am, I come, in the scroll of the book it is written of me. I proclaimed righteousness in the great assembly. I have not restrained my lips, O Lord, you know. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. May your steadfast love and your truth continually keep me safe. Second reading comes from 1 Corinthians. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech, and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He he will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord.
At this time, I invite our children forward for our children's lesson. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. That's good. I'm so glad that you are here and able to come forward. Um, you'll notice by the colors and the banners that we are in a new season now called Epiphany. Um, it is the season of light um, because Epiphany began with the wise men following the star until they found Jesus. And today, we're going to share a story that is very similar to the one that we're going to hear in the gospel lesson. And so I want to share it to you from the, the beginner Bible book. This is one of my favorite Bibles um, for us to learn about Jesus. And so the story goes like this. Jesus chooses his disciples. And the word disciple is literally a person who follows or who listens and allows Jesus to change their life. And so Jesus chooses the people who follow him, um, his disciples. Jesus began to tell people about God. He knew that he had a lot of work to do. And so he went and he found some helpers. As Jesus was walking along the seashore, he saw some fishermen. Jesus called to them and said, come and follow me. I will make you fish for people. How many of you guys like to fish? That's a fun thing to do in the summer or the winter, isn't it? Yeah. Well, right away, the fishermen left their boats and they followed Jesus. Their names were Peter and Andrew, James and John. Later on, Jesus met a tax collector named Matthew. His job was to collect tax money from the people and give it to the king. But when Matthew heard Jesus, he quit his job because he wanted to follow Jesus too. Jesus chose more people to be his helpers. Their names were Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and another man named James. Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas joined them too. Jesus now had how many disciples? Twelve. And he called them his disciples or his helpers, and Jesus taught them all about God's love. Now, the season of Epiphany is that time when Jesus calls us, a reminder every day that Jesus calls to us every day, and we ask in the season of Epiphany that God would help us to be good helpers to him. And we do that every time that we listen to Jesus, and we can listen to Jesus here in church, we can listen to Jesus when we take time at home to pray, like in the morning or before meals or at bedtime. We can be Jesus' helpers and learn from Jesus when we help serve one another or we help someone who is in need. And so that is going to be our focus in these coming weeks of Epiphany. So why don't we have a word of prayer and then I'll send you back to sit with your families. Let's pray. Gracious God, Thank you for calling us to be your helpers and your disciples. Help us to listen each day to you so that we might truly follow you and be able to share your good news with everyone that we encounter. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for coming forward. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the spirit descending like from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and heard or saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas which is translated Peter, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. If these past few years of pandemic life have taught us anything, perhaps it has been a new appreciation for the workers in our life and in our world that up until now we have always taken for granted. People like grocery store workers, restaurant servers, caregivers in our nursing homes and assisted living facilities, healthcare workers, childcare workers, Teachers, bus drivers, our UPS, FedEx, and postal workers who deliver our mail and our packages, and truck drivers, and so many others who work hard and who keep our world functioning. I mention this because so oftentimes in scripture, it seems like we always hear only about the big guys, people like Adam or Abraham, Moses or Elijah, the Apostle Paul or St. Peter, disciples, prophets, and apostles whose reputations over time have grown and sometimes even become almost larger than life. And there's some of that today too in the gospel reading because most of the reading is about John the Baptist. And for the first time too in John's gospel, we are introduced to Simon Peter. But today's gospel is also about a little known figure named Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. If you think about it, it couldn't have been easy to be Andrew and grow up in his big brother's shadow. But today's gospel reveals an incredible picture of Andrew's faith. And we are reminded anew that God has a place for every person, whether their personalities are larger than life or whether they are more quiet behind the scenes kind of people 
who go on about their task without fanfare or fuss and simply focus on doing what needs to be done. Andrew came by faith, or came to faith, by hearing about Jesus being the Lamb of God. And he heard those words uttered by John the Baptist. But after hearing the good news, he then followed Jesus until Jesus turned around and invited him to come and see. And we read right off the bat that once again, Jesus obeyed. He did come and see Jesus. And because of that encounter, in his excitement, he then goes and shares the good news with another. Oh, that we would every moment of every day be that bold and that excited in our own witness. One of the great dangers that we face as congregations is that we become complacent. We do so because for much of the early generations of this country, since we are a country that was founded on religious freedom, back then when people built a church in the midst of the community, people came. In those early generations, church was the very center of a community's fabric. And so literally all we had to do is open the doors and people would come in. How many of you have seen the movie Field of Dreams? Build it and they will come. That's how it was in the early years for most congregations. But the problem with that philosophy is that it worked too well for too long. And it gave us a false sense of security. And it keeps us from a more biblical and a more active engagement with our faith and with others in our community. But Andrew's example today of faithful discipleship reminds us that we cannot and should not be afraid to share the joy and the excitement of following Jesus with others. And that especially means not waiting for people to come to us but being willing to go out to others, no matter where they might be. It calls on us to engage with one another, not only just here at church, but out in the streets of our community and even beyond. But there's also more good news here. And that is, in case you're like, oh, pastor, this sounds heavy for me. When we hear the word witness or evangelism, so many times it can leave us feeling mighty uncomfortable. We might picture knocking on the doors of strangers and having to speak up, which most of us are not comfortable doing. But the truth is we make evangelism so much more complicated than what it needs to be. All that Andrew did in today's story was he went to another person and he shared Jesus with them. And when Jesus himself invited Andrew to come and follow him, he said only these three words, come and see. It was an invitation, nothing more, nothing less. Further notice that Andrew didn't go the first time to a stranger either. He went to his own brother. What a great place to start with people that we already know. And all we have to say is come and see. We don't have to give them the whole history of the Christian church. We don't have to give them a perfectly polished theological treatise of why they really need to come and follow. We don't even need to quote scripture chapter and verse to intimidate or to show off. All Jesus is asking us to do is simply invite, come and see, and let our excitement and our joy in faith show through. Did you know that Andrew is only mentioned three times in the Gospel of John, one of which is today's lesson? And each time in John's Gospel he is mentioned, He is about the work of bringing someone to Jesus. 
In today's reading, he brought Simon Peter, his brother. The second time, he is in chapter 6, when he will bring a boy with five loaves and two fish forward to meet Jesus in the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And the final time he is mentioned comes in chapter 12, where he is bringing some Greeks who happen to be traveling by, and he brings them forward to meet Jesus. Now, Andrew might not be Peter. He might not even be John. But Andrew was so very faithful, quietly and enthusiastically doing the work of the kingdom, inviting and eagerly sharing with others the Lord who brought such a change to his own life. Now, for those of you who are like Andrew, who like living behind the scenes, thank you for all that you do especially when it is not always noticed right away. Thank you for your faithfulness. And thank you for the eagerness with which you live and serve in the kingdom of faith. And for those of you out there who are more like John the Baptist or Peter, who enjoy being more vocal and more public, perhaps because you have a type A kind of personality, thank you too. For you bring leadership skills and a different kind of witness to the power of God's work in you. And that truly is the good news of God. It is a place and a space where all are welcome. Each of us are unique and diverse. But in the end, Jesus calls us all to be a part of God's kingdom and to enjoy being found by Jesus as he invites us to come and follow him and to witness in our own unique ways and styles to the God who is so eager to find and welcome and include. May God bless you in your inviting and in your sharing. May you continually be amazed at how God works in the lives of ordinary and diverse people like you and like me. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 715, Christ Be Our Light. And we will sing the first three verses, verses one through three, hymn number 715.
I invite you to please stand as you are able, and together let us confess the faith that we hold in common using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And today, as we are called together to follow Jesus, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Almighty God, put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire all the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, the waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters. Protect them from pollution. Call and remind us anew of our job to be good stewards to all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy upon all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you incline your ear to all who cry out to you. Draw near all those who are suffering from violence or injustice, for those dealing with illness or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all who are in need. Today we lift up before you for your continued healing. Arlen and Sharon, Russ, Tom, Dylan and Kayla, Steve, Denise, Gary, and Pastor Murwood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you are glorified in the servants that you have called. This weekend, as we remember Martin Luther King's service to this country, give us bold trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in every time, in every place, you have sanctified your people. Today we praise you for the testimony of those who have died in faith. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, too, we lift up Cheryl Herrick's family and pray for them as they entrust her into your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we bring to you all of our needs and our hopes, trusting in your wisdom and the power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time, we will continue our service with the offering of our gifts and our tithes.
please stand. in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table is ready and all are welcome. Holy Communion today will be by intinction. Please take the bread and dip it into the wine. The darker color is wine. The lighter color is grape juice. We also have gluten-free um, wafers that are separate chalice if you are gluten intolerant. Um, also at this time, um, we ask that the community assistants would please come forward and the rest of you may be seated and the ushers will direct you forward.
Please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. His peace be with you. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us together sing our sending hymn, hymn number 314, Arise, your light has come. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.